The whole thing started with a friend of mine called Tim, who had a, a 1980 Camaro in high school. And then we all met up one time working on the Camaro in his yard, and ever since then, it's, we've all kind of hung out. We ate lunch every day together in this little hallway in high school, and we would just talk about cars. Daniel was talking about getting an MG or an Austin Healey at the time. And then we started looking at old cars for me. Quickly realized that they were too difficult to get. In the beginning, I said, it's not practical at all. This is your first car. You want a Honda Civic. We started looking at MGAs. Every day in French class for like a year, we were on eBay looking for different MGAs and whatever, and then we eventually found this one. And we went to go and look at it with my dad. Dad gave me this challenge where he was, you know, making me realize that this is going to be a lot of work, you know, I don't know if it's a good idea. Two weeks later, it was my 15th birthday, and completely unexpected, Dad drives this lemon yellow MGA, this one, into the driveway. So I was looking at what car am I going to get? All my friends are getting these cool cars, you know? He just got this MG at his birthday party, and I'm like, okay, I'm next. Obviously, it's got to be something old now. I don't know where the Mini came from. Mr. Bean, maybe. The Italian job, like, later. I just love the car. I'm Daniel Hornstrand. I'm 21 years old, and uh, I drive a 1962 Austin Mini Cooper. My name's Daniel Harrison. I'm 21, and I drive a 1958 MGA. It's the shape. It was more of a, wow, that looks amazing kind of a approach. It's something about this long, sweeping arc and this like square foot of bodywork. That for me is the reason I totally fell in love with this car and you know all the little Bakelite switches and the wooden wheel, there's like this appeal that only these have. I was very much so a new modern car, no issues, AC. And then I just started looking online and I found the Mini and I was, that was the car. You'll see one car and that'll be it. It draws you in. My parents were, okay, you're gonna get a car and I come at them with, this is what I've been looking at and they absolutely not. They're, they're, you're gonna kill yourself in that thing. There's, and I, I don't know how, I just slowly broke them down. <laughs> we just cued the music and then started tearing it apart. We started with the suspension and the brakes and had all the bodywork done. It was completely rusted out. It needed a lot of work. It spent like a year and a half in this shop being worked on. I finished the rebuild right before I went away to school. I don't have a trailer, so I had to drive it on that freshly rebuilt engine and that was quite the planned out experience. Like We had to make it over the grapevine and I knew it wouldn't make it during the day when it's too hot out. So I planned it to drive at night. I'm driving this tiny little car with all these semi trucks up the five freeway at night for eight hours at 60 miles an hour. It made it with no hiccups and that really sealed it into me that, wow, this new engine actually works. And you know, I drove it for a year or so, and then um, I started applying for college and stuff. The next time I went out for a drive, it wouldn't start and had this horrible knocking noise from the engine. The piston had totally blown its head off, but um, it's okay, because now I have a brilliant little piston head coaster, which works really well it can be reliable if you make it reliable. Not to say that it hasn't left me on the side of the road a couple times. It's like an ebb and flow between fixing it and driving it. They're, they're both enjoyable. At first, it's kind of annoying, you know, but then like, you have some buddies over, you know, you're working on it all night, and something fun always happens out of it. And then when you finally get it going and everyone's there, you turn the key and it's got high fives all around, and you go for a drive, and you drive it as much as you can before something else maybe goes wrong. During that time, I um, decided to rebuild uh, a 1.8 liter MGB engine for it instead of the 1.5 that was in it before. You know, put a new wiring harness in. I also rebuilt the gearbox because I, you know, I, I don't know anything about cars. I've learned completely on this car from my other friend Daniel, who, you know, during this time as well also got his Austin Mini. 
I, it's like a sixth sense with your, your car, I feel like. You, you develop like a, an invisible radar for things going wrong in the car. Dale and I grew up together, you know, we met in the third grade, and ever since then we just snapped. It's really funny, you know, we're both named Daniel, both our last names start with H. It was a running joke, you know, Daniel squared, who's Daniel 1, who's Daniel 2. And during that time, my mom was really sick with cancer. This was all going on in the background too, so I'm, you know, working on this car, growing, dealing with all of that. Then she passed away while it was still unfinished, and uh, we did some other little things along the way just to get it running better, but that's when I really started learning how to drive on it, you know, I was 16, 17 that point. It's a shame that my mom didn't see it finished, but um, you know, the number plate is HLNSWHL, which is Helen's wheel. I, you know, named it after her and in this rectangle you would have the radio or something, but I thought it would be cool to put one of her paintings on canvas in there and it really ties it all together. I feel like that knowledge has developed over time. I remember when we all first met, we all bought these tiny little pocket bikes, these little 50cc children's. We rebuild all the engines on the workbench, we'd be driving on the bike lane downtown with an American flag sticking off the back. We just love everything tinkering, and I think that's what's really unique about our whole group of friends. It was really a group effort, all of us figuring out how we were going to fix everything that broke, and of course everything broke. But you know, I learned so much in taking everything apart and putting it all back together. Rebuilding the engine by myself was a big thing for me because I learned how to do everything, you know, match, you know, the camshaft specs with everything and I ended up building a pretty good little engine for it. It hasn't blown up yet and I've done, I don't know, 2,000 miles on it now, so. You share that collective knowledge and all of a sudden become this kind of library of things that most people would find absolutely useless, but tiny nuggets of information that, that are invaluable to someone when they need it, but it's something that you can't get anywhere else than getting your hands dirty. I feel like it's what keeps a lot of people away from having an old car. It's horrifically unpractical. It's really hot, you know, you melt every time you drive it, but it drives unlike anything else. It's very raw and rugged experience. It, it's a lot of my friends at school and just everyone around our age group, they they, yeah, they see a car like, like a black box, so if, if the engine light's on or it doesn't start, it's just the car is broken. They have no idea like, it could be something stupid like a fuse. I drive this all the time, you know, I go to the grocery store, work, the beach to Santa Monica. It's great for going down PCH. And I get people rolling down their windows and going, you know, oh, in 1970, whatever, I... I definitely feel like, like the black sheep of our age group with these cars, and a lot of people just don't get it. You'll, you'll come back to school on Monday and they'll go, oh, what did you do over the weekend? And you go, oh, let me tell you, I just spent 12 hours trying to saw this bolt off, three saw teeth at a time, with my arm this deep in the car. And I go, huh. You know, we are 20, 21, we want to get them on the road, you know? So we try and fix them as fast as possible and, and do it properly that they'll last and get them out on the road because we love driving together. In fact, it's a really rare moment where all of our cars are running at the same time. So when that happens, you know, and we're all back home because we're all away at university too, that's really good. We, you know, get together and all try and drive. There's just something about it when you get into a car like that. It's such a visceral experience. That's There's nothing like it in any modern car, but it, it's really, driving for the sake of driving. When they tell someone, oh, I'm just gonna go for a drive after school or something, they go, to where? I'm like, nowhere, just to drive. You know, you've gotta, you've gotta drive them, I believe, in driving them. People, you know, people put them in their garages and hide them away. Yeah, just drive it and keep it clean. And you feel so connected, especially like all, all the work you've done in the car, when you finally turn the key and you're taking it down the road, it's just bliss.